Good day, Sir Murcia. Good day, classmates. We are the team one to present to you and discuss to you the different demonstrate the basic skills. Under these skills, we will tackle different outlines to broad our topic. Let's start. First, our objectives focuses on demonstrate proper removal and installation and also demonstrate proper measurement and inspection. The outline of our topic are tools for engine services, basic skill for removal and installation, engine condition, steps for hover hole, and lastly, last five slides is for presentation of pictures or other video for using your subject vehicle. Tools for automotive services. Automotive repairs require the use of variety of tools and measuring instruments. These tools are manufactured for use in a particular way and accurate work and safety can only be assured if they are used correctly. To use a proper tools and measuring instrument, you need to learn the correct uses and functions. You need to learn the correct ways to use the instruments. Um, select correctly. Try to keep organized and strict adherence to upkeep and management of tools. These are the examples of tools in engine services. First, caliper gauge. A caliper gauge is a type of a dial gauge used to measure the inside diameter, with the type shown in the diagram on the left. The long pointer rotates once as the movable lug moves in 2 mm. The use of caliper gauge is to use the inside diameter of a fulcrum or a side of an engine cylinder or cylinder bore. Next, a cylinder gauge. Cylinder gauge is used for measuring the cylinder bore. Also, there are a lot of special tools for automotive services. These are the engine stand, engine hanger set, ring gear brake set, valve spring lifter arm, pivot, valve seal remover, valve guide remover and installer, valve seal and valve guide installer set, pulley puller, piston pin replacer, camshaft pulley puller, coupling flange holder, dust cover installer, oil seal installer, bearing puller, also oil seal installer, tappet adjust wrench set, handle part of 49G03795, support lock and also attachment but there's a, there are a lots of tools to use in engine so these are the example only there are a lot of tools to use the different areas or different parts in engine to make it perfectly to make it also um, keeps quality for a customer so there are lots of modernized instrument or tools to develop fastly the work of the mechanic and also the car itself so guys let's move on to the summary of basic skills for removal and installation so before we do the overhauling we must familiarize the tools and measuring equipment na gagamitin natin sa ating pag-overhaul. At hindi lang yun, kailangan bago tayo, at hindi lang yun na ma-familiarize natin yung mga tools and measurement equipment, kailangan maging organized din tayo sa ating, sa ating paligid para ma-prevent natin yung accident. So dito sa basic skills removal, um, ini-indicate dito kung paano tayo magtatanggal ng mga uh, bolts or mga uh, fasteners sa ating mga engines. At sa installation naman, uh, 
bago tayo mag-install, syempre, may mga parts na tayong may mga parts tayong tinanggal na hi, pwedeng hindi na siya fixed doon sa ating engine. So gagamit tayo ng mga measuring tools like uh, micrometer, ver vernier caliper para naman na malaman natin kung pwede pa ba yung mga fasteners or ibang parts na tinanggal natin na pwede pa bang ibalik doon sa ating sa ating engine. At bago natin i-install ulit yung mga yung mga tinanggal natin na parts sa ating engine ay kailangan gagamit din tayo ng mga pang lubricants. For example, yung mga oil na pwede, uh, mga oil na gagamitin natin para ma-prevent yung pagkikiskisan ng dalawang metal to prevent the, the friction. Tapos, um, gagamit din tayo ng mga seal, ng mga, mga sealer para naman sa pag uh, to prevent the leak. And then, yung mga gasket natin, kung okay pa ba siya, kapag hindi na okay, papalitan natin yung para yun nga, ma-prevent din natin yung leak sa ating dalawang um, uh, parts or metal kasi siya yung nasa gitna nun para hindi magkaroon ng anumang leak so, ayun sa atin namang pagkakabit hindi lang natin basta-basta ikakabit yun kailangan inspectionin din natin kung kung ito bang kinakabit natin ay ay tama dito sa sa parts na na ano paglalagyan natin ng for example na ng bolt na ano na tinanggal natin ito bang bolt sa to e, e para ba dito sa ating um, transaxle ganyan kailangan uh, uh, kailangan aware din tayo kung kung yung mga bolts na natinanggal natin ay para doon sa ating engine then then kailangan inspectionin din natin yung ating mga oil filter yung ating mga power pump kung okay pa ba yung ating mga gear kung okay pa ba hindi ba siya natutuyo yung mga bearings natin kailangan Uh, inspection din natin yan kasi minsan may mga hindi na nagpa-function dyan or sira na tapos hindi natin na-inspect so pwedeng kaka-overhaul natin pero may na-miss out tayo na isang parts pwedeng uh, maging cause yun ng pagkasira ng iba pang parts ng ating engine so that's all thank you So, para sa akin, yung nasa'yo sa akin is yung crankcase bent hose. So, for me is, crankcase bent hoses or breather or hoses located within the crankcase ventilation system. For example, a crankcase hose connect to the top of the PVC bulb to the vacuum port intake manifold. A crankcase bent hose usually costs around $50 to $500. So, next is yung sa harmonic balancer. For me is, the harmonic balancer is countering torsional crank motion or harmonic vibration. And the harmonic balancer help minimize torsional cranks of harmonics and resonance. The damper is composed of two elements, an inertia mass and energy and dissipating element. Sa may dye engine oil naman is, can you put dye in engine oil? For me is, pour the leak detector dye into the engine lang. Then, tip lang, if your engine is low on oil, add a bottle of the correct dye for engine leaks to the oil. You're adding to the engine, then pour the oil leak detector mixture in the engine. If the engine oil level is okay, simply pour the dye into the engine. So yung ano sa loose defected drive belts or and tensioner for me lang ha, for my idea or for my understand lang grinding or squeaking noise from the belts or tensioner the most common symptom of, of a bad or failing drive belt tensioner is noise from the belts or tensioner for me is yung magkakaroon siya ng loose defected drive belts pag magkaroon ng mga pagkakamaling symptoms or magkakaroon bad 
failing drive belt tensioner. So, parang ibig sabihin lang magkakaroon siya ng ingay. Then, sa oil temperatures gauge is simple lang. Oil temperatures gauge for aftermarket automotive or wireline wire use. Sa may, sa may clicking noise in exhaust naman, parang sa akin, many exhaust leaks especially if they come from the exhaust manifold can cause a tricking noise exhaust manifold leaks can be caused by a blown gasket loose or broken manifold bolts or studs or even crack manifold if you smell exhaust from the engine compartment and hear ticking noise you have a leak so syempre ibig sabihin lang dito pag minamoy kang hindi maganda or maingay sa nagmumula na yun sa ticking noise in exhaust Doon sa may pantry naman ng yung, ano, some paper over the exhaust pipe is para lang sa akin na when I hold some paper over the exhaust pipe it blows out and really rapidly and basically sounds like when you were a kid and you would pin a baseball card between the spokes of your bike wheel. So from what I've read some people have this effect when they do have a bent or burnt bulb some people get in brand new cars with no problems. Yun lang yun, ayaw nila magka problema kaya buibila na sila ng mga bagong sasakyan. So may spark plug naman dun sa ano. Siyempre pag what happens if you never change spark plug para lang sa akin is your poor starting, yung misfiring acceleration, defective, handling remote of the spark plug crank, the motor bring fresh air into into ano, into the pollution. Siyempre pag yung ano yung mga usok din naman kasi nasa sasakyan di ba nakaka-apekto sabi yung spark plug pag wala yun tsaka yung gasoline hindi sila magkakombine hindi magkakaroon ng enerhiya dun sa installing naman with spark plug with a hose I always start spark plugs by hand before applying any pores from the socket in hard to reach area I use a rubber hose to aid me in starting the spark plug or over the years I have found that all rubber hoses the not created equal for this job Sa piston rings to fail naman is para lang sa akin. Poor lubrication can cause modern piston rings to overheat and lose their tension. When combined with excessive varnish, the piston rings can stick in collapsed position. Excessive compression ring, blow by will force engine in into take, air ducting intake manifold. Doon sa may leak down test to naman, para matest or ma mag makita kung paano. A leak down tester is a measuring instrument used to uh, determine the condition of internal um, combustion engines by introducing compressed air into the cylinder and measuring the rate at which it leaks out. So the last is what is acceptable cylinder leakage. For me lang ha, yung pagkakaintindi ko lang. So yung ano doon, leak down readings of up to 20% are usually acceptable. Leakage of over 20% 20% generally indicate internal repair are required. Racing engines will be 1 to 10% range for the top performance. Although this number can vary, ideally baseline number should be taken on fresh engine and recorded. So, ibig sabihin lang nun is depende rin yan sa iwapat ako man cylinder leakage mo kung paano kasi mas maganda kasi kung bago mas mataas pa sa 20% yung makukuha mong usually na acceptable ng leakage. Vacuum test. Vacuum test is a tool uh, that we use to detect or to monitor the impending failure of our engine. So, malalaman natin dito if maganda bang performance o yung takbo ng ating engine. So, to know the condition, we have two types of vacuum test, which is the cranking vacuum test and the Edley vacuum test. In the cranking vacuum test, we have the measurement of 2.5 inches of mercury or normal 3 to 6 mercury. So, pag bumaba, yung measurement natin sa 2.5, uh, this, this thing is malalaman na natin if may problem ba sa engine natin. So, here's the... Um, possible na maging sakit or maging problem ng ating engine which is too slow cranking speed warm piston ring leaking bulb or excessive amount of air bypassing the throttle plate 
sa too slow cranking speed kasi uh, minsan nagko siya sa battery ano natin battery failure or faulty electrical connect- connection <coughs> nakayang ma-detect ng ating vacuum uh, uh, cranking vacuum test Edley vacuum test the normal measurement ng ano natin ng uh, Edley vacuum test natin is 17 or 21 inches HG. Yun yung proper uh, measurement na sa condition ng ating engine. Kasi once na bumaba yung uh, normal measurement niya, uh, that means meron na siyang uh, problem or di na maganda yung condition ng ating engine. Uh, pwede nating i-check yung ating ignition timing kasi baka um, meron na siyang retard ignition timing or retarded uh, cam timing. Kaya kailangan natin i-check yung timing belt natin or yung kung nakapra- maganda ba yung pagkaka-install or nasa proper installation ba siya. Fluctuating vacuum test means wala siyang maayos na reading or steady lang yung needle natin sa measurement natin or merong paggalaw yung uh, needle natin. Example, if kanina normal yung reading natin, nasa normal yung needle natin, and then bigla siyang bumababa, nagdadrop reading siya, and then minsan lumalagpa siya sa normal, ng reading reading natin ng ating vacuum test it means it means guys um meron ng malfunction or meron ng na detect yung ating uh, vacuum test so dito yung maaring maging uh, cause ng mal uh, fluctuation ng ating uh, vacuum is baka meron yung sakit yung ating mga valve which is dapat uh, which is sinasabi dito is may st- sticking valve na siya or yung valve natin is may, wala nang masyadong lubrication or lack of lubrication sa valve stem natin and then weak valve na kaya dapat kailangan na natin palitan, palitan o yung burn, burn valve or nasusunog yung valve natin dahil sa ginagawang uh, ignition ng ating valves and piston and spark plug na maaring mag-cause ng pagkasunog ng valve natin sa exhaust man or sa intake valve and then unequal fuel mixtures so ito yung mga dapat nating uh, i-check baka kasi nagkaroon ng ganong readings kasi ito na yung mga possible uh, problem ng engine kung bakit siya nag-fluctuation. Bubababa yung readings, minsan naging normal, minsan tumataas. So, here's the example ng mga uh, readings sa pictures, kung paano ba nag-fluctuation yung, nag-fluctuating yung ating vacuum.
Hi, I'm Ben Wadilla with Popular Mechanics. Today on Saturday Mechanic, I'm going to walk you through the basics of taking care of your car. All right, now we're going to check all the car's vital fluids. Well, most of them are vital, some of them aren't. We're going to start with our power steering fluid. This is basically hydraulics, so you want to check to make sure that we're in between this min and max level here. And looks like we're fine. Now we're going to move over here to our uh, windshield washer fluid. Pop that open and pull the little screen out. Take a look down in there. That one looks good. This one holds a heck of a lot, over a gallon. Check the coolant level here. And you can see here we've got a minimum and a maximum level. It just needs to be within that range. And it is on this car. We also want to check, poke your nose in there, you don't want to see it cloudy or any oil in there. If you see that, you've got bigger problems. But we're fine for this car. Next thing we're going to check is the brake fluid. It's generally somewhere around where your feet are in the car. So pull that off. And this one's going to be hard to see. So. I need to lean way over and take a peek. And that one's good. Now, if you have to add brake fluid, make sure that you open a brand new bottle for that. You can't let brake fluid opened sit around for very long. Max that you can have it is about three weeks. Otherwise, it starts to go bad. I'm going to check our oil now. These are some of the hardest to find occasionally. So like anything in your, in your car, you check the owner's manual to get an idea where it's at. Looks like this is A, a little low, and B, getting kind of dirty. This last oil change was about 7,000 miles ago, so we're due for an oil fill. 7,500 miles is where we're recommended for an oil change with this car, so we'll change the oil on this one, do that one a little bit later. We're going to keep going, though, up here and check the air filter. To get to that, you need to take this cover off here and pull this snorkel off. Cars are all different, so like I keep saying, check your owner's manual on how to do it. This one, you have to do some clips on the side, and these are generally a joy to get to, every last one of them. All right, hopefully we can pull this off now. Sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge. So, we'll pull this filter out. All right. Definitely dirty. Time for a new one. We got our new filter. It's time to put it in. So, we'll slide this under. This might be a little bit of a fight to get it in, but it's not, it shouldn't be that bad. slides into place like that. Make sure you get it good and seated. You want to have a good seal around the end and the edges. So now we can clip this back in place like that. And like that. These are good and fun to fight sometimes. This back one is really fun. All right, so now is when you would check your cabin air filter if your car has one. This one does not, so we're going to put this intake piece back together, put the cover back on, and move on to checking something else. Since we're up here, we might as well lube some things too. We're going to hit the, uh, the latch here, but you're also going to want to hit all the hinges on the doors, on the hood, in the trunk. You can really tell in a couple years the cars that don't get lubed up regularly. I like to use white lithium grease. It stays well and it lubes pretty good. So let's get a nice coating on there. All right, next thing we're going to do is check the tire pressure. We're going to use this digital pressure gauge. We found these to be pretty accurate. There's also a stick type. You can use either one. It's just as easy as pressing it on, 
This tire is right at 35 PSI. You're going to want to consult your owner's manual for the proper pressure. Most of the time they're 35 PSI. You're also going to want to check the tires when they're dead cold so you get the proper reading. All right, now we're going to change out the windshield wipers. Uh, it's always good to do this about twice a year, especially after winter. Wipers usually end up getting beaten up pretty bad during winter, so it's good to put a fresh set on when spring rolls around. You're only going to really need a screwdriver for this job. And, you know, actually these are all a little bit different, so sometimes it'll take a little bit of finagling to figure out. This one, you pop this tab here and pull this out and then the whole thing sort of comes apart. Just like that. Set that aside, and this old clip is gonna get junked. We don't need that anymore. All right, since we've got the old wiper off, we can put the new one on now. And that's pretty easy too. Now, since it's got this hook, you're gonna wanna put the hook end in through the wiper bend this piece down this little connector push it through and then circle back around and when you hear it click you're set just move on to the other side all right that's pretty much it for the first part of this basic maintenance segment we got everything wrapped up up top for the next segment we're going to look underneath and we're also going to change the oil don't forget if you have any comments or questions leave them in the section below you might get a call from us <laughs> Engine assembly is a time-consuming task, and it does require some knowledge, a lot of patience, and a good understanding of math and basic mechanics. But to ensure your engine lasts as long as it's supposed to and performs up to its peak potential, you are going to need some specialty tools to go along with your basics so you can assemble an engine accurately and reliably. And we're going to go over some of those tools in the order that you'd use them. Like micrometers and a dial bore gauge, calipers, a rod bolt stretch gauge, torquing tools, piston installation items, camshaft degreeing and valve train setup, and the cleaners and lubes we like to use. To really assemble an engine correctly, you'll need a set of micrometers. Now these will be your biggest expense, but if you take care of them, they will last you a lifetime. Now mostly they're used to measure crankshaft journals and to set up your dial bore gauge for measuring other parts of the engine. Another critical thing is a rod bolt stretch gauge. Now this is a great tool for checking the bolt stretch. That is critical for engine longevity and to keep the bolts clamped the way they're supposed to be. A quality torque wrench is also essential. You want to make sure to have a 3 8 drive and a half inch drive one on hand. That way you've got both ends of the torque range covered from the low to the high end. Now these are Matco click type wrenches that are high quality and will last a long, long time as long as you take care of them. When building an engine, clearance ranges depend on the purpose of the engine and how much power it will produce. The rings are also gapped differently depending on if the engine is naturally aspirated, blown, or a nitrous user. The proper way to install a piston in a bore is with a ring compressor. Now there are several styles depending on your budget. The first is a universal band style that uses a square key to tighten around the piston which compresses the ring pack. Next in line is another band style that's made for specific bore ranges. It uses a pair of specialty pliers to compress the rings. Finally, there are tapered compressors. These are a tapered sleeve that the piston passes through and that's what compresses the ring. They're available in adjustable or for specific bore sizes. Knowing the position of the intake center line on the camshaft is critical in any engine build. Degreeing tools include a degree wheel, a deck bridge with a dial indicator, and a lobe lift tool that fits inside the lifter bore. Last, but certainly not least, are cleaners and lubes. We'll use brake cleaner and lacquer thinner to clean parts, extreme pressure lube and some Max Tough for high wear surfaces, ARP Ultra Torque Lube for consistent torque values, and to round it out, a good old fashioned can of oil for all other wear surfaces.